Well, when I think about Southern Appalachian dance, I, you know, I've, I've been curious I, I've, about it for a long time. I've been calling dances, and eventually, you know, one day I said, where's this stuff come from? And in trying to understand how these dances came to be, I, I thought I would define the different characteristics, you know, what makes these dances different than other dance types of dance, uh, other types of set dance. So I, um, I sort of boiled it down to three characteristics. Um, the first is the structure of the dance, which means that uh, they're closed formations, either a square, four-couple square, or a circle. Those would both be called square dances. You stand beside your partner as opposed to across, like in a contra dance. And uh, the dances have a verse-chorus structure. We have a main figure followed by a chorus for everybody. The main figure is usually two couples at a time. And uh, these two couple figures are typically visiting couple figures. So you have one couple at a time leading off with couple two, then three, and working the way around the set, as opposed to the quadrille format where it's the head two couples and the side two couples. So I see that as, a, as, a, as a, something that sets the southern dances apart from the northern New England tradition, say. So the structure of the dances, I mean, obviously they have share some things, but that's one of the big characteristics. A second characteristic is the southern dances have um, some very distinctive dance figures that you don't find in other traditions, such as uh, Bird in the Cage or uh, the southern do -si, do si do which is a series of hand turns, or Chase the Rabbit, Chase the Squirrel. There's, there's, all, there's dozens and dozens of figures that are unique to the Southern dance tradition. Um, you don't find ladies' chains and right-left throughs and, and some of the things that you would find in contra dances or quadrilles. So these distinctive Southern figures are part of the story. And the third uh, big characteristic I see of the Southern dance tradition um, has to do with the speed at which they're danced and the improvisational nature of the dances and the dance calling. And these dances are not phrased to the music. It doesn't matter if the tune has two A's and two B's. It could have, the parts could be twice as long or short parts. You could have a third part. You could have extra beats. It makes no difference at all. The calling is all timed to the beat of the music uh, rather than the phrase of the music. And so the dance figures, you don't know how long the dance figures are going to take, but as the caller, you see where the dancers are, and when they're ready for the next figure, that's when you give it out. And it has nothing to do with where the music, whether the music's on the A part or the B part. And, um, and this improvisational aspect of the Southern dances uh, really makes them very different than square dances, uh, say, of New England. And uh, so, so I, I, I looked at these different characteristics and tried to figure out where do these different things come from and who were the people who settled in the, in the Southern Appalachians um, and looked through historical records and migration patterns and who were the people who ha were here. And what I find is that all these, these characteristics that I just mentioned can all be found in earlier dance forms that were known by the different people who were here. And so um, they're a combination, they're a, they're a blend of a number of different dance traditions. Um, obviously there's European dances involved, there's French cotillions and quadrilles that we get the chorus and ver verse chorus structures, the grand right and left promenade, we get uh, the French dance terminology, do si do, a la man, promenade, sachet, all that stuff comes from the French dancing masters. There's definitely figures that I would say um, look a lot like some of the uh, figures from Playford's English country dances, uh, like Chase the Squirrel uh, is probably related to Hunt the Squirrel and the figure eight patterns of some of those dances. And uh, the visiting couple thing shows up in a lot of different traditions. There were some of the Playford dances of visiting couples. The basic structure of a contra dance, you work your way from couple to couple down the line. That's still like a visiting couple. And, and there were... Um, you know, some of the cotillions and quadrilles had some visiting couple type figures. So that's not that uncommon a characteristic. Um, some of the individual figures uh, come from 
well, from e English country dances, from the cotillions, from the quadrilles, um, from and even from Afri I, I believe from African American dances. Some of the figures involving uh, hand turns uh, that I think come from the Scots Irish reels, so I think that's a big part of it too. Uh, so it's 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 a blend a blend of different things, but um, I think the single biggest ingredient, uh, the, the secret ingredient that makes these dances, that transform these dances and set them apart from the European tradition is the dance calling. And the fact that it's improvisational dance calling means that the dances don't have to follow the structure of the music. And the caller can give out anything they want at any particular time and the dancers follow. And this is very different than the quadrilles or contra dances where you have the music is phrased in certain ways and the dance fits that phrasing. Um, if you look at southern dance music, uh, the dance tunes have extra beats and irregular parts and all kinds of little quirks. And the music and the dance are one. You can't, you can't just separate one from the other. There's different forms. I mean, the, the, the basic form of the southern Southern square, if you call it squares, are a closed set where you're standing beside your partner. And you could, it could be a set of three couples or four couples, or it could be a big, huge circle. And uh, they're all called squares. And the, the, there's one question is, which came first? You know, is a, is, a, is a circle just a square with more couples added? Or is a square a circle for four couples? And uh, there's different, different thoughts on that. Um, in, in the Appalachian tradition, I, I believe that the four-couple square came first, and in more modern times, it's expanded into the circle. And um, again, I, the circle formation is more common in the Deep South, and that's also what slave dances were like, big rings. And I think that there may be a connection there that the, the big, bigger ring may have been adopted from the African-American tradition. The fact that circles are called squares makes me think that square preceded it as a form because terminology tends to hang on from one form even when the form changes. So the fact that squares are called circles makes me think that the squares came first. Huh. Um, and yes, one community will do one type, one will do another. If it's, if it's a, you know, if I'm out there calling just a one night stand somewhere. I, mean, I do may do a mix of things, but if you go to you know real old time community dance, they only do one type or the other, but they don't do both.